The Universal Translator, it does what it says on the label. With the nature of Starfleet being an exploratory agency, and more so the general interstellar nature of Star Trek, the language barrier is a problem that is inevitable. The first Universal Translators in the Star Trek universe, like much of the technology, was first tested in the pre-Federation era of Starfleet, and a vital part of the interstellar kit provided to both away teams and the Warp 5 ship itself. Many of the visiting species to Earth around this time, such as the Vulcans, simply learned human languages, such as English, to converse with, but the NX-01, heading off into unexplored territory, well it was only natural to consider the need to communicate in various languages, so a software was developed to actively listen to a spoken language, look for patterns, compare what it was hearing to known databases, provided by the Vulcans, and translate as close to real time as possible. This system was built into the communication systems of a starship and manned by a dedicated comms officer. On the bridge of Earth's first deep space vessel, Enterprise, it was Ensign Hoshi Sato. She had a talent for language and was regarded as a genius in the field, interpreting on the fly during away missions, and cataloguing many of the dialects the crew encountered during its ten years in space. A portable device was also a gadget of this time, and it was a handheld pad into which a communicator could be slotted, presumably to act as the receiver and starship uplink. The device was not observed to sound the translated words, but display them on a screen. Due to the prototype nature of the device, there was often error or much open to interpretation, necessitating the presence of such a person as Sato. Utilising this precursor matrix to the Universal Translator and her own knowledge, she was able to create the Lingua Code translation matrix by the time of the Federation's formation creating a device that was far more capable and rapid with its translations. By the 2230s, Starfleet communicators had this ability added to the device, and it would translate from a library of recorded languages. The communicator-bound translator was limited to a thousand locally stored languages, which sounds like a lot, but Earth alone has over 6,000. It seemed to operate by listening, translating the perceived audio while immediately projecting the translation into the desired language. For the sake of all those watching the shows, however, the dubbed over dialogue was not double played for very long, and I think it's supposed to be a given that conversation continued in this manner, at least in person. This was apparently Roddenberry's original idea of how the device would appear to work too, and that it would be based off reading thoughts. We'll get back to that. Presumably the ones in Enterprise also did this to an extent for those times when the crew was on a planet. Either that or it was simply overlooked for the sake of the story. By the 2260s there was a separate Universal Translator device that was often a part of shuttle inventory and away teams. The most notable advancement, however, over that of the comparatively limited translator from decades earlier, is that the Universal Translators of this time had enough processing power to actively assimilate a new language into its matrix within minutes of exposure to it. It included scans of brain patterns in an attempt to rapidly comprehend intent, further building the Starfleet lexicon. This could be seen as a rather invasive device now that I think about it, as it attempts to scan thought patterns. This aspect of the UT would be true for its future iterations too. Starfleet, reading your mind since 2260 whether you like it or not. Starship Universal Translators have always been more advanced than any portable type created by Starfleet due to the direct access to the computer cores and the ability to read up transmissions over the view screen interface. On top of this, passive observation of new signals being emitted by nearby interstellar powers are added to this library, often compiling a basic understanding of a new language even before official first contact is made, although this is not always the case. In the 24th century, the COM badge became the standard for Starfleet moving forwards. The badge itself replaced the communicators of days past, and as such also folded in some of their other features, such as the UT. 
a com badge, like a full universal translator, could decipher a language on the fly, make it intelligible to the user, and vice versa. Now, it's never addressed as to how this is supposed to work. It could continue to work in the style as depicted in Star Trek Discovery, where we are expected to assume that an audible transmission is being played at the same time as the speaker, and that for simplicity's sake, we as an audience are spared that. Or the badge could in fact produce some form of noise-cancelling signal to mute the speaker's original voice, and only play the translated dialogue in their tone. Both these options honestly seem far-fetched for different reasons. Having a translation play over regular dialogue would be bound to attract comments and maybe even irritation or confusion at least once during the show's tenure, while the other method would be crazy advanced. Then again, this is science fiction we're dealing with, so sure, why not? The Universal Translator has become a staple of Federation life, so much so that although Starfleet officers are generally asked to undertake a language or several to study, many let that aspect of their training slide, because of the convenience of the UT, and English is a staple Starfleet language, because it's mostly based on Earth. In real life, the reason again is… convenience. Universally translated signals carry identifiers with them, however, often marking a converted message as artificial, and there are even algorithms to identify the exact translator software used, and therefore a message's sender. Undercover missions, cultural heritage, and times where the translator fails ensure that learning multiple languages would be a beneficial activity for a Federation individual. Nonetheless, it's a lot to ask of most species to learn multiple languages, and those who do often have a reason such as diplomacy, trade, or personal history, or a natural proclivity towards linguistics. Aside from some form of translation software being installed in almost every terminal capable of communication, and anything linked to big enough computer cores, personal translators were common too. The Ferengi, for example, had implants in their lobes to perform this function on the fly, translating received languages for them, which makes sense for such a commerce-centric species. On board Federation vessels, it's often assumed that the Universal Translators are simply off for the most part, as crews genuinely do speak English. Perhaps only aliens have them active for most of their time or something, but there are many instances of a person deliberately speaking another language, human dialect or not, that is not translated automatically, showing that the UT must not be active all the time. So, that's the evolution of the translator technology in Star Trek and how it's supposedly implemented. Of course, it's all just for the convenience of the viewer, and occasionally a plot element, so establishing exactly how they work is somewhat hazy, as the overdubbing method seems to be the most obvious, unless you want to go full Babelfish or TARDIS and have it create a telepathic translation, which has far bigger implications than just language. Thanks for watching this video on the Universal Translator. Alfitizen. Eh? Je ne habla espanol? Hm? Kubali? Stokia?